Well, hi, you booktube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Um, continuing, I almost want to call this Tag Saturday because I'm doing a whole bunch of tags this morning, and I'm going to just kind of put them. I'm going to I'm going to upload them and uh, schedule them for one each day this week. I'm trying to do it so I don't get so uh, bogged down with everything during the week. I'd like to still have content. But, uh, you know, finding time with school is kind of difficult. So I am replacing my reading time this morning with tags um, in, in other videos. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, I am going to do the favorite authors tag. And um, the original was done by Nicole Rojas. I hope I s s pronounced that right. Nicole Rojas. I had watched that video. It's been a while back. So, um, or week ago or so, maybe two weeks ago, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, favorite authors tag. I'm actually going to do two versions of this. So I'm going to do a fiction version and a non-fiction version because I, I prefer non-fiction, but uh, then you got to look at what subject matter and, and um, but I do read fiction. So I, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to do two videos for this. So this is going to be the fiction version. So favorite authors tag, fiction. So for me, who's your favorite, question number one, who's your favorite author? And I'm actually, I'm not going to do one person. I'm going to do three of them. I have three favorite authors that I buy pretty much all their books. And, um, and one of them has passed away. Another one has, to my knowledge, stopped writing. And the other one is still very um, prolific in his writings and how much is coming out. So... Uh, my my uh, three favorite authors, I, I love John Grisham. Uh, I love his lawyer books. They're absolutely great, I, I think, anyway. Um, he, his stories are very entertaining, fast-paced, and uh, I just, I like them. They're a good read. Um, I like John Jakes, who is getting up there in years, and I thought he was going to produce another book, and I have not seen that book come out. And uh, that was a few years ago. He had mentioned he was going to try to get a, a third book to the Homeland series and hasn't come out. But that's okay. Um, but I like his writings. And then I also love Michael Crichton. Of course, he passed away. Um, but I like those are my three favorite authors. So question number two. When or how did you discover this author? So for me... Um, let me let me start with John Jakes. John Jakes was introduced to me by my history teacher in high school, and um, he handed me the book *The Bastard*, uh, which is the first book in the Kent Family Chronicles series. And I can I could still remember it to this day. Uh, Mr. Rich Richley, he um, he's he's since passed away, but hey boy, you're gonna love this book. You just try this. You like. American history, it's got everything. It's fast-paced, it's got love, it's got sex, it's got war, it's got... Uh, and, and he just went through this whole series and it just, it absolutely cracked me up. I was hooked on the book just by his description and his enthusiasm. And he also did that with another book, um, a book series, The Australians. And I can't for the life of me remember who the author is right this second, but um, he gave me basically the same description. But um, when he when he gave me that book, uh, I got to admit I started reading it. And when I was in high school, um, I did go through a period there where I was a little bit in a slump on my reading. I just didn't read a lot. I was more of a social butterfly, and my sports and my friends were my life, like many high school kids. And uh, I read some of the classics when I was in high school because those were assigned. And I did enjoy them, but I didn't do a lot of that extra free reading um, like I did in elementary and middle school. So he handed me The Bastard, and I tried it. I, I got a few pages in it, maybe a chapter in it. I can't remember how far I got. And I just I couldn't read it. I don't think I was ready. And I came back to it in college and I, and of course, Mr. Richley, you're going to love this book, boy. And, and his, his voice and everything was in my head and just, just made me laugh, cracked me up. And so, um, I, I picked it up in college and, uh, started reading it and I just fell in love with the story. That was when I was at Northwest Missouri State University and, um, there was a used bookshop in town and I read, 
uh, or no, 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 I started that one back at Missouri Western, excuse me. And uh, I read that one, and then when I went to Northwest, I ended up buying every one of those in the series, and I just started reading one after the other after the other, and I got hooked. And I know there's other people that have been hooked on his stories. They're fast-paced, and I know, I know like um, Steve Donahue talks about, his stories have a lot of convenient things that happen where you're in the right place at the right time. But I, I don't mind that. I like that. I think that's fun. And um, he brings a lot of historical events in and historical characters. And I just I just liked it. I thought it was a good series. So um, John Jakes, that's how I discovered him, was my teacher. Uh, Michael Crichton, on the other hand, I discovered him in middle school, I think it was. And I never read the book in middle school, but I had a friend who was reading Jurassic Park. Um, this is the same friend I've talked about him before in videos where he was reading uh, Stephen King's It, and he was reading, um, which, you know, if you've seen that, it's a big, thick monster. He, he also was reading The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books, which, I mean, the, the Lord of the Rings is a big book. And in middle school, I was so not ready for those books. And he was reading Jurassic Park. Now, I tried Jurassic Park. I wasn't ready. It didn't interest me at that time. I thought it was really boring. But then I came back to it. Um, was, I might have been teaching. I think I was was teaching when I finally read that one. I absolutely loved it. That was it, it was great. And I and it goes back to that my friend uh, in in middle school, and uh, he introduced me to that. And then John Grisham, uh, I got introduced to John Grisham. Of course, I was familiar with his books when I was a kid in the 1990s. That's probably what introduced me to him, was actually the movies. And then when I got to Northwest Missouri State University and I was going into that used bookshop in downtown uh, Maryville, when I was going into that used bookshop, they would always have his books for, you know, relatively cheap price, three, four bucks for, uh, for the hardback. And I started buying those and reading those, and I it was off to the races because I remember... I remember the movies when I was in middle school, high school, like, um, let's see, The Firm, Time to Kill, uh, The Pelican Brief, um, The Chamber. I remember all of those when they were coming out, and I really liked the movies. I had the big-name actors at the time, and um, it, it, it just kind of hooked me into the story, and then I really liked the books. So, anyway, that's how I discovered those three authors. Uh, number three, was it instant love or did it take time for you to fall in love with his or her books well i i kind of already answered this question john jakes took me took me a little while michael crichton took me a little while and then john grisham as soon as i finally picked up the book that one was instant i i loved his writings right off the get-go and so um i won't i won't carry on about that one because i like i said i already answered that one um let's see what am i on four which is your favorite book from this author? Okay, so um, I'll start with John Grisham. Probably my favorite book. I I struggle with this one because I like all of his books. I really do. But maybe my favorite one's not even a lawyer book. Um, uh, the Painted House is probably one of my... It has to be one of my top couple favorites. And it's about a uh, cotton... Our family is on a cotton farm down in Arkansas in the 19, I think it was 50s. And, um, you know, you, you got the migrant workers coming in to help pick cotton. And then there's a murder. There's a love, um, um, behind the scenes love story going on that shouldn't be going on. And and kind of ties in with the murder. And I, I really liked that book. I thought that was a really good book. And then I also liked, and I'm trying to remember which, which story it is. There's one of them where... Um, the story takes place down in the uh, down in South America, and um, I like it because it is the book that I read when my daughter was born, and um, yeah, I I really liked it, and and maybe it's just because it was tied in with with my daughter being born, but I really liked it. Um, so I'll do I'll do the painted house because I know that's the name of the the one story. I can't remember exactly which story. The other one is. I'll have to look. I can I can see it from here, but I can't see the the title. Um, 
for John Jakes, I think my favorite book of his is probably still uh, The Bastard, the first book in the Kent Family Chronicles series. Um, I just, I love it. I love the American Revolution and his, his character starts out in France and he's getting all of the philosophy and stuff like that of the, of the um, time period. And then he travels to America through a series of events, ends up in America. He goes through the Boston Tea Party, meets Ben Franklin. He meets, uh, he ends up on George Washington's um, uh, elite group, his, his group of soldiers, and ends up in the uh, when he in the battle, I'm pretty sure he was in the Battle of Bunker Hill in the movie, or not the movie, the the book. So I, I really like that one. And then for Michael Crichton, I was struggling with this because I really like all of his books. I know I love Jurassic Park; it is awesome. But um, probably the books that got me started, I liked also Sphere, Congo. I read Congo and loved it. Timeline, I loved it. Um, I, I really did like most of his books. I, I haven't, there's only one or two that I did not like. And uh, so anyway, uh, that would be my favorite books from those authors. Uh, next, next question is, which is your least favorite book from this author? Okay, so on the flip side of that, um, if I start with John Grisham, definitely the least favorite of mine of John Grisham is the nonfiction book, and forgive me, I'm trying to find it on the shelf because I can't think of the name of it. Um, the, the it's the one about the it's the nonfiction book about the guy who's on death row for a, for something he did not do, and they were working to get him off of death row. And um, I I apologize, it's a it's a thick book, um, but it's his only that I know of is only nonfiction and I didn't like it. I think he needs to stick to fiction. Um, it just, it, it was not fast paced like all of his others. That's probably what it is. And when I read Grisham, I expect fast pace. Um, for John Jakes, I think my least favorite would probably be a book that I have not read. I love historical fiction. You have to understand that. So I have liked all of his historical fiction books. Um, but he did write like some westerns and he he wrote, and I've read some of the westerns. I didn't mind those. But he also wrote like, I want to say it was like Conan the Barbarian series or maybe it wasn't Conan the Barbarian, but it was a Barbarian series. And I don't like those type of books. And uh, I think that's probably my least favorite of his even though I haven't read them, I know I don't like that style. Um, or was it Brock the Barbarian? It was something like that. Anyway, uh, and then for Michael Crichton, the one book that I have tried to read and I have never finished, I've struggled with it, The Great Train Robbery. And I don't know why. It's one I'm going to go back to and try to get through, but it did nothing for me. I did not like that one. All right, so... How many books have you read from this author? Okay, so John Grisham, I've, I've read all of them, and he's got 40, is it two? Something like that books. I can't remember. I've read all of his books. Uh, I know I take that back. There are a couple of the Theodore Boone books that I have not gotten yet, that, so I haven't read those because I, I just haven't found them used yet. But I've read all of his adult books and three of his Theodore Boone books. I haven't read the, the latest three. Uh, for John Jakes, I've read all of his historical fiction, and I've loved all of them. I don't know what the number is. I'd have to count, but I have read all of the historical fiction. And then uh, Grisham, I didn't get a total number, but I have read most of his science fiction. I didn't. I haven't read his early books with, uh, I think he did like some doctor's books, and uh, some sh shorter novels, and I have not read those. But his his recent science fiction stuff, I've read almost all of them. I know that doesn't really answer the question. I did not count. Sorry about that. Um, what best describes this author? Okay, so if you're reading a John Grisham book, chances are you're going to read a lawyer book. And um, his books are fast-paced. He's got pretty good stories that go. Most of them are really good. Um, there's, there's always a, a lawyer who is, he, he started out with high ideas 
and then he's going through the dredges of being a lawyer, the, the all the negative stuff, the long hours, the um, having to pick up cases that you absolutely hate or having to fight the impossible battle against big business and, and stuff like that. That would be, so if I was describing John Grisham, that's how I would describe him. And then um, if you're reading John Jakes, he typically has a normal, average, everyday, you know, average Joe character that travels and goes through many, many um, issues with uh, different historical events. So he's got like the North-South series, which is all Civil War. He's got the Kent Family Chronicles, which takes you from early American history, uh, or excuse me, colonial history. So like right before the, the American Revolution, all the way to 1890-ish, right in there, 1890s. And um, let's see, what other series does he have? Um, most of his stuff is, is American Revolution, Civil War, or, or um, Immigration. And then if you're reading um, Michael Crichton, it's science fiction. He's, he's got some stories that are kind of out there, but they're, there's enough stuff in there to make you believe like, hey, you know what, that might be happening. Or like with um, like Jurassic Park. You know, you know, you know how much stuff there's there is with DNA nowadays, and you know it kind of makes you scratch your head. Hmm, they've tried to clone. You know, they cloned sheep. Maybe they could do dinosaurs. He's he's always got stories that make you think. Well, maybe he might be able to do that. And so, um, anyway, I, I like his stories. And all three authors are are pretty fast paced. That's that's the other thing I like about my fiction. I like fast paced fish, fiction. Um. What genre does this author write? Okay, I kind of answered this one already. John Grisham is like lawyer type books. Um, John Jakes is historical fiction. And a lot of Michael Crichton's is science fiction. Why do you love this author? <laughs> I kind of already, like I said, I've already answered that one in, in answering the other questions. You know, John Grisham just... Um, fast-paced story that I just I just like his characters and uh, that's it's kind of the same way with John Jake's fast-paced I love history um, his characters you, you kind of fall in love with his characters he and and he gives you characters you love and then he gives you characters you hate and then he'll give you a character that you really really love and then he'll kill them off and he, he makes you go whoa I mean he, he brings out emotions in you in his writing and that's that's pretty cool and I always like Michael Crichton's because, like I said, it's always the what if or maybe in his stories. You know, that it's it's far-fetched, but at the same time, it's not far-fetched. So uh, that's why I love those authors. And then, so that was the last question. The last item on here is who do you tag? And um, so I am going to tag... Um, I, I don't know who all's done this. This is going to be one of those, I think, an open tag... Uh, Everybody do it. Uh, well, you know, I, I will tag. I take that back. I'll tag Kayla over at Spontaneous uh, Reader, uh, and hopefully she hasn't done this. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see her take on this. She reads a lot of a lot of good books and always has interesting takes on on what she reads. So, um, oh, book zealots, I'll I'll tag them as well. And bookish Bryants, there we go. There's three of them. So I'll I'll stop. I'll stop with uh, my tags. So. Um, anyway, BookTube, I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope everybody's doing well and getting lots of reading in. Uh, thank you for watching and happy reading.